If you enjoy our original content, please consider becoming a supporter on Anchor so that we can continue to bring you laughs every week. The following program may contain immature situations, themes, and is intended for an adult audience. The opinions expressed here do not necessarily reflect the views of everyone else working on the show. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to the Danny McDermott Show. <laughs> How was it, Gavin? Was it perfect? Was it? That was beautiful. In fact, I was there enough to compose myself <laughs> after seeing it. <laughs> was there enough drama? Did you feel the pain? I did. It, it just felt like you're not. You're not watching my pain, Kevin. No, I feel <laughs> it. Oh, dude, my son is here. That is awesome. Yes, it is. It is. And he's actually making an effort to stay off his phone. Nice. For Yeah, at least five minutes out of the day. I'm just going to say, what's the over-under? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's actually, we've been having a lot, a lot of fun, I'll tell you, man. Isn't fatherhood great? It's spectacular. And your boy's always been a good kid. He really is. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Apparently, it skips the generation. Apparently. I mean, <laughs> man. I mean, he's nothing like me, but he's everything like me. It's crazy. Um, anyway, so it's April Fool's Eve. Nice. Or, or is this an April Fool's joke? Is it, Kevin? Are you? No. Is you, it's okay. legitimately April Fool's Eve. Okay. Just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. Um, so <laughs> now we got to go through this stuff. So it's also Bunsen Burner Day. National... National Clam on the Half Shell Day. Yeah, I bet there's some big enthusiasts about that. Uh, okay, you got to do this one, Kevin. Like if they ate humans and served us on half our house. How, I, I don't know how to deliver that, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm sorry. I tried. I've read over it several times, and I just don't know how to deliver that one. <laughs> Do you know how to erase them? Because that works too. <laughs> National Crayon Day, uh, World Backup Day. What the hell is World Backup Day? Where you walk backwards or you back up your phone or what the hell is that? That's before April Fools. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not backing up into any April Fool. I'm not doing it. Back up your computer and your cloud storage. <laughs> Did you did you know how April Fool started, Kevin? I have theories. You have, you have theories. <laughs> well, let's hear a theory. I want to hear a theory. Um, you got to. You get. Do you have to, if you have to make it up, then don't don't offer, Kevin. I think the king <laughs> executed his previous gest jester on March thirty first. I like the, that guy. The, the guy that took his place was April Fools. Hmm. Was he funnier than you? Everybody is funnier than me. <laughs> that black area above my head, slightly funnier than me. Well, I think we see your full head tonight, don't we? It's in attendance. I th it, it, yeah, we actually see your full head. That's amazing. That's it, a very uh, rare. For those of you who don't watch the show all the time, it's a very rare thing to see Kevin's entire skull <laughs> because he can't get the green screen right. Well, I, I, I <laughs> celebrate. You did it, man. You look good. You look better than me. You better you better change it back. <laughs> <laughs> Two thirds of a head or none at all. 
So, uh, no, the original reason it happened was because they changed the uh, beginning of the year from April to January. And the people who did not realize or forgot or didn't know and s started to call the new year April 1st, they were April Fools because they didn't hear the news that the year changed to January 1st. How about that, Kevin? Huh? Huh? Uh I, did I do some, I did some learning. I thought the calendar was 10 months <laughs> and they added that uh, Julius Caesar and Augustus Caesar added July and August. Kevin, you know what? I'm not going to debate the article. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's it's what I read. Great. And that's what we're going with. Okay. <laughs> so it should this be is my fun. show. <laughs> so um, I'm just kidding, Kevin. You're fired. Well, um, that's why October. Oct is a prefix for eight. But it's the 10th month. All the signs point to that story being bullshit, Danny. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kevin. We're going to have to fight this out later. That's uh, how you handle April Fools. You debunk bullshit. You debunk bullshit. Well, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> what? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I'd like to spread more misinformation, Kevin. That's one thing I think our society's missing is misinformation. I really do. I really don't think we have enough of that. <laughs> All right. So when you when you encounter a snake in the wild, red, yellow, black, stay the hell black. Red, black, and yellow, what a nice fellow. Do not listen to that. I made that up. All right. You're making up nursery rhymes now. I'm skipping the rest of the monologue. Things that could kill people. I'm, skip, I'm skipping the rest of the monologue. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to bring up our guest. Well, let's do it, Kevin. Come on. Ready? Did you skip the good part of the monologue? Did I? All right. Let me vlog. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. A day for World Backup Day. Okay. Which one? Which part? National Prom Day, National Tater Day, Na National Little Red Rot Wagon Day? No, but I wrote oh, a theory God. about April Fools. All right. Manatee Appreciation Day. So that's for you, Kevin. <laughs> I'm busting on you. Now, wait. Wait, what was the. Oh, the theory for April Fools. Where is it? Oh, you got to say it. That's your theory. My theory for April Fools is it started off where somebody could not handle rejection. They asked somebody out on a date. The person said no. And they're like, you thought I was serious? April Fools. Nice. See? See, that's why you got to deliver that, Kevin. This is That was your joke. I would have horribly <laughs> like killed it. I would It would have been awful. Let's bring our guest on the show, folks. I'm All very right. excited about this, uh, this gentleman. Uh, he played Jeff Barnes on five seasons of NBC's Chuck, the Russian landlord, Mr. Belyakov on Togetherness, uh, Marin, Transformers 3, Dark of the Moon, and several indie films. Please welcome Scott Krinsky, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it. Yes. I, where is he? <laughs> there he is. Wait, no. I don't see him. Do you see him, Kevin? I see him in a circle. Are you there, Scott? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, but we can't see you. There you Why go. Why is my... <laughs> a April Fool's? <laughs> there you go. I was expecting to hear glass shatter and a knife. <laughs> it's also National Potato Day. That's why my name is Tater this week. Oh, there we go. Scott, there. welcome. Oh, now we can't hear him. <laughs> there you go. Just, we got to unmute him. He's muted somehow. Hold on. <laughs> no, he's not. Scott, you're not muted. It's got to be your microphone, my friend. Everything was perfect a second ago. Scott, I know. What happened? You, how's that? There we now go. My hair is perfect. There we yeah, go. I didn't know. My, my my camera turned off and I didn't know if like that was a, you know, like a behind the scene. You know, this is all this is an April Fool's uh Eve. Uh, <laughs> hey, listen, you you yeah. look good. I like I, your I like your your background and your lighting is everything's great. This is good. Yeah, I'm just We don't always like, get this with a guest. This is green screen. This is uh I'm trying to really? look uh, like I'm in a home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, can, you, you, <laughs> you're a low key guy. You know, you don't want to. Yeah, I'm low you key. Don't wanna brag. You don't want to brag about your green brag. screen pictures. Yeah. 
Um, you guys are in New York and like Hawaii or somewhere. And- <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the Hawaii section of Staten Island, New York. Yeah, I just got out of bed from my afternoon nap and uh <laughs> no, what, you, it's funny, like the camera was perfect, right? We did a test and then yeah. I'm sitting here and I thought it was part of the I thought this was a joke. I thought uh, Did you really? <laughs> I was like, why is my camera not working all of a sudden? I use fucking Zoom, sorry, all the like, time and, and now Scott, uh, right when you're no bringing sh- me on. Scott, there's there's no show. April Fools. Oh, cool. No. Go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I would have taken a longer nap. Um, no, I'm kidding. It's no. good to see you, buddy. Yeah, you too, man. Uh, I it's haven't been, seen you in a uh, long time. When, it's when's been the last probably, probably before the before the holidays, before the pandemic started. So probably sometime in the fall of 2019. Wait, would that be, wait. Was that at my show? One of my shows? Was that on the? Yeah. That was probably doing or, comedy, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, well, I'm we don't so have to take. A lot. That's okay. We, the, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. We're like for for five or ten minutes. We're both like, uh, well, let's see. Was that? Uh, oh, mm, uh, hold on. Uh, that was the the fourth. How many minutes since? Anyway. Fall 2019, because, you know, like 2020 is a blur. I'm trying to remember, okay, the whole pandemic was basically 2020. Yeah. You know, yeah, so it's yeah. like this weird year and you're like, well, wait, what was the year before that? Okay, that was 2019. So nothing much happened in 2020. No. <laughs> well, a lot no, of, thing, a lot of things all. happened. <laughs> well, a lot of things happened that made things not happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of people out pull their pants. And then a lot of other things happen. <laughs> a lot of people stopped wearing pants. Well, that's why yeah. I'm thinking of pants boom when the recon the economy reopens. The reconomy starts. The re reconomy uh, is re-conomy. that your new word? I like that. Yeah. Well, it's, I've been everybody's been talking about Bitcoin with me. Have you guys heard this? Yeah. All the Bitcoin stuff. I'm like, I have no idea. Anyway, we should be talking about you, Scott. Yes, we should. Come on, Kevin. Let's um, do the ADD. Okay. How you doing? I feel like I'm what? leaning. I feel like I'm the leaning <laughs> tower. <laughs> I've got to sit up straight. <laughs> I love what you did in my reading, bro. Really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's on a ship. That was fun. Listen. I am. I don't know why I'm leaning. I look like I'm leaning. Maybe it's like, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you got some people at home going. <laughs> <laughs> the leaning tower. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, your reading was fun. Um, let's let's get that movie made. Yeah, we got to get that movie made, man. That was a fun reading. Um, It'd be really like, really bad if you told me that you made it, you know. And <laughs> April Fools. <laughs> April Fools. I made it. April Fools. No, I. Uh, no, that was amazing. It was it was a lot of great people. Some of them are my heroes, you know. And you were there. You crushed it, bro. So, I'm I'm excited. That so that was one of the one of the times we got to know each other better, and then my shows and stuff like that. Now, yeah, but but I saw you before you ever saw me because I love that series, Chuck. Thank you. I love that series, bro. Oh my god, you are amazing in that series. Thank you. Now tell That's me why fun. why why did Jeffster break up? Just tell me. Well, <laughs> we kind of didn't. So you guys are still yeah. playing out because I want, you know, we're I think still playing. Fans- we're still playing. We're still playing. I mean, we're on hold, you know, um, we're going to make, you know, it's going to be like one of those bands where they make a big comeback 20 years later, you know, dude, that would be seriously. Like- I, I think you could actually get people to come out and see you. I, I think do. we could too. I think that's a cool thing you should do. For those of you who don't know, who haven't seen Chuck, uh, he plays this character, Jeff, uh, that's uh, kind of a, a druggy, alcoholic, uh, brain dead employee at the Buy More. I will and, correct uh, that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, is, but the only reason he, the only reason he's brainless is because he's on the drugs. Because there's an episode when you get off all the stuff and you become super smart. But do you remember what it was that that I was on? They they found um, they found out I was on. Right. It wasn't really. Uh, it wasn't really a drug. It, Think about a car, something to do with a car. Oh, oh, exhaust. 
from the car. Yes. yes. Exhaust yeah. fumes from sleeping in my car, my van. Yeah. So, oh yeah. So that, that, that like made you smarter. Is that what made you smarter? No, that made me dumber and slower. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Oh, then, right. Then, All right. When right, 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 off, right. then when I got off, then when I got off the fumes. That's right. Was, That's right. You know, I got to use my real smart self. Yeah. So he, he's a character who always sleeps in his car and is pretty much like insanely stupid because he sleeps in his car with the vapors and stuff like that. Yeah. But he's a great character, man. He's so freaking funny, man. And he was a, re he, how many episodes did you do? How many, you, you did oh, how many? Five seasons. Yeah. From the beginning to the end. Yeah. Yeah. And you were, you were like the comic relief through all that. You really yeah, were. We, I mean, the whole cast, but you know, we were all, we had good chemistry. It was, it was one of those, uh, you know, magical kind of shows where everything just really, you know, everything just mixed together perfectly, you know, great chemistry with everybody. That's what awesome. was it like working with Zach? I'm, I've only met him once. Great. Yeah. I mean, awesome guy. Yeah. I mean, we had a great time and I, we just had, it was just, it was really just a perfect experience. You know, uh, it, he's great. Uh, you know, I, sometimes I would only pop in, you know, and work like with our storyline sometimes for two or three days, you know, of an episode. So, and in mostly in the store, you know, cause we were in like this store that was similar to like a Best Buy. So, you know, um, so sometimes, you know, my, my experience was a little different, you know, because I didn't get out of the store as much, but sometimes we did, but it, we, we all had just great fun working on it. Um, you know, I just remember too, like fun thing about working on a show that long is like holiday episodes and, you know, and all the, all the craziness with all right? the Isn't that doing insane? like hol holidays as your character, you know? Yeah. That's incredible. You, you had such a successful show that you were having holiday episodes. That must have been, how, how did that make you feel? It's fun. Yeah. You know, uh, we always, when we had great, we had great, um, no, no, don't great, just be, don't just be like a baseball player. Yeah. Played a good game, played a great game. Yeah, well, we had great <laughs> guests, you know, we had great guest stars. We had um, amazing guest stars and I can't even remember like Linda Hamilton. I'm just going to name like some really, there's so many amazing. Oh my God. People. John Larroquette. But, John Larroquette, uh, Chevy Chase was on the show. Um, oh, yeah. To, you know, I mean, I got to meet some really amazing people that, that you know, as a kid um, and growing up or, be, you know, prior to Chuck, just people you're fans of. And then you're like, wow, I'm on a set with these people, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's that was great, too. And then and working at a place like, uh, you know, Warner Brothers. I mean, just, you know, a dream come true. Every, every job is a dream come true, but that was that that was definitely like a highlight so far. Now, when you shoot uh, uh, episodes that are that long, how do they how do they do the shooting schedule? Do they do it? They don't do it in order, do they? Or do they? Yeah. Just, well, what do you mean the progress? Yeah, the show, the season. Yeah. Do they do it in, in order. order of the actual sh episode when they shoot, or how do they do it? Yeah. Yeah, they do. I mean, I know now. You know. Uh, yeah, that we did we did shoot in order um, of the way they're going to air. I mean, occasionally maybe an episode got flipped or something, uh, but uh, and you know now I know with COVID and stuff, shows that can do it are doing like block shooting. Uh, do you know okay. what that is? No. Where if they know that they're using this location for like three episodes, and they've got all the scripts written, they're going to get everything shot while they have that location set up, you know, things like that. So oh, yeah, yeah, more, yeah. more efficient. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have scenes that are going to be in the same location, like if you leave and you come back later in this show, you want to shoot them all there while you're there. Yeah. And especially with the pandemic, you know, while people are, I guess while people are tested, you know, so. Yeah. 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 But yeah, and, we uh, shot in order and uh, yeah, it's great. Now you guys did a reading uh, uh, during COVID of an episode. We did. At the beginning, we did uh, like a, it was a, for a charity, um, for, uh, for, uh, I forget, I forget the name, uh, the, one of the charities that collects, you know, food and money to give food to, uh, to homeless and, and other people that need it. And, uh, that was at the beginning with, with Entertainment Weekly. Yeah. We got to, that was pretty, that was pretty cool to see. I, I, I gotta admit, all you guys just, 
being yourselves and reading a script. It was it was really fun to watch. Yeah, you know? and, it, and it was in, it was fun because we hadn't all been. I mean, we were, we were together virtually, but we hadn't all been together like that. And uh, did you guys I have a virtual? Like, did you guys have a virtual after party where you just all hung out? Uh, yeah, I guess for a little bit. Yeah, we hung out and we we got on you know early too. I think before we started, you know, we had a little pre-party. Um, okay. Oh, really? That's cool. <laughs> and I think you know it's interesting because that was in the beginning. You know, sort of in the beginning of the pandemic, um, uh, May, I guess. So, you know, it's just you're still getting used to all this virtual stuff that seems so kind of normal now. Right. It's pretty crazy, right? Yeah. So, right. Can you? It's been a year. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a long time, <laughs> especially for people who are used to working with people. Uh, acting wise and art, art, you know, artistically, you know, and being in front of an audience and, you know, it's, it's a, it's a big change for us, you know? Yeah. So, have you done any more comedy lately? You did, by the way, he does uh stand up comedy as well, folks. So have you done any comedy lately? Not, I have not done a lot. I mean, hopefully going to start dipping back into it. Uh, you know, I've uh, spent, a lot of time working on I, I'm painting and, and drawing. So I've been taking classes and working on that, uh, that uh, part of my life right now for a lot. I spent a lot of, yeah, taking a lot of drawing classes and doing that over the pandemic. That's cool. Yeah. Well, I think we're all, all trying to stuck at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all trying to, yeah, we're all trying to do some. I've, yeah, yeah. Have you done any, any of the uh, other talk shows or, or shows that are online? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, I did. You know, I did play readings. I did some play readings. I did some some other kinds of screenplay readings and things like that. Uh, so I've, I've done that uh, to keep busy. But, you know, there's nothing like the live audience for anything. Right. Right. No. But you still got to try to create, which is why Kevin and I have started to create TikToks. And yeah, you're, uh, you're TikToking yeah. away. We're trying to TikTok. In fact, you are uh you've been nominated to be a judge tonight. Okay. For our for our TikToks. I am Kevin, what, what were the what? I just want to point that out that uh, we have a champion and his name is me. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Calm down. You were lucky. You were lucky the green screen. You didn't know that green screen was gonna go green and back to the picture. You didn't know that was the funniest thing about it. <laughs> So you're going to judge our, our okay. text now. It's a lip sync, right. an advice, and then using an effect. Those are the three categories. Okay. All right. Okay. There you go. And now for the Intergalactic TikTok Champion of the Universe Contest. Ah! Okay, All do right. a TikTok, Kevin. How does it work? We got to dance? I take my career very seriously, and one of the things people have been telling me to do is to do TikToks. So I would never do anything to embarrass myself, so I'm having my son help me with this TikTok. I'm sure he's going to be very respectful and not make me look. Shane? Where's my son? Where is he? <laughs> Shane! <laughs> well, you're in Times Square. How can he hear you? <laughs> True. I've got a very loud voice to my son, apparently. But there's nobody else in Times here. Square. <laughs> All right. Let's see Kevin's now. Now from the top, make it drop. That's some wet. That's some wet. Now get a bucket and a mop. That's some wet. That's some wet. I'm talking wop, wop. Now from the... <laughs> well, I got to be honest, um, I'm a big fan of Megan the Stallion, and he's got a cat and an animal. <laughs> Wait I a mean, minute. So that, I'm sorry. I know it's your show, oh, but I got to go with Tater on this one. <laughs> Mine is so much funnier. You can never beat animals. Oh, man. That wasn't an animal. <laughs> I was Kevin <laughs> with his mouth in a picture. And he's, you know, nope, no nope. cajoling. Fine, fine. Right, look, I'm not a poor sport. Congratulations <laughs> on that one, Kevin. I'll never... <laughs> oh, yeah. There's two more, Danny. So, all right, let's see the next one. Wait, play Kevin's first this time. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
Okay. It was a lip sync. This is the best advice you could ever have about going to the public restroom. When you go to the public restroom, wait, order. Wait. No, that was the lip sync one. Right? Okay, that one definitely goes to Danny. Yes. Right. So it's yes. a tie. And uh, his oh. teeth. I want to know who your dentist is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Danny. All Taters the marbles made me rest hungry, on this one. And, um, yeah. All right, here we go. Number three. This, this is the best advice you could ever have about going to the public restroom. When you go to the public restroom, you go in as strangers and you come out as friends. So I don't know what you got to do in there to do that, but you got to do it. It's, it's, it's the law. The bathroom is not a social place. Your friends are the soap, the paper towels, and the sentence, I will see you outside. Thank you. Wait a minute, Kevin, you saw my TikTok, dude. <laughs> what are you, you're supposed to not look at them until the contest. Scott, do we have a winner? Wait, hold on a second. Okay, right. first of all, <laughs> the sign in the video was backwards, okay? And that wasn't my fault. It was the way my camera took the picture. It said, walk in his friends, come out as strangers. I just want to qualify. What was the concept? Before, <laughs> before, now, you know what, Susanna, play the video again. I want that, now that that's in your head, watch my video again, and then watch Kevin's again. Watch mine again. This is the best advice you could ever have about going to the public restroom. When you go to the public restroom, you go in as strangers, and you come out as friends. So I don't know what you got to do in there to do that, but you got to do it. It's 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 the law. Okay, now play Kevin's. The bathroom is not a social place. Your friends are the soap, the paper towels, and the sentence, I will see you outside. Thank you. See, obviously, he had to see my TikTok. You're I also, I'm also not dancing around the concept of a glory hole. I wasn't. <laughs> hey, this is a family show, Kevin. How many times do I got to tell you that? Scott, Bad, Kevin. Bad. Do we have a winner? Uh, I'm going to go with Danny again on that oh, one. Oh, thank uh, God. Thank you, God. I'd like. Mm, tastes like victory. Yes. Now, would you have gone with Danny if you he know, didn't badger you he for 20 was, minutes? He was wearing his mask and. Uh, you know, it just and I loved his hair in it. You know, it was perfect, right? I, look, yeah, I, mean, I, I had, I had, I had two makeup ladies. No, <laughs> next week the gloves are off and you're going down. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, <laughs> I love this. This is fun, right? We get the next time you can be in it, Scott. Yeah, I'll do it. I I'll do a TikTok. Do you do I'll karaoke? I do badly. I cannot sing. But you I know, do it anyway. I know I sound like I have a deep, great deep voice, but uh, no, I do. I do do karaoke, and uh, uh, it doesn't make me sound better. So you just do it to inflict pain. Yeah, <laughs> I just lost my earpiece. Um, I do it to inflict pain. I, you know, because isn't it supposed to? You're supposed to sound better with karaoke, right? It's supposed to like make you sound better it doesn't well, doesn't do that for me you know that'd be funny if you had someone who was a uh, karaoke host with auto-tune so everybody who sang sounded amazing still wouldn't work for me <laughs> in fact if i tried to sing country music people would switch countries <laughs> do you like country music i do not <laughs> i like so, old so not even I, not only is your voice horrible but your heart wouldn't be in it well, I mean, maybe there's some old Hank Williams Sr. that's pretty cool. Glenn Campbell was a talented yeah. guy. But beyond that, nothing nothing in the last likes, 50 years. He likes country. <laughs> if you like those songs, you like country. He likes Megan you, the Stallion. I did, you know, I wasn't a country person. And then over the years, I've just found myself getting into it more. Yeah. I'm slowly yeah. uh, getting more into country. Yeah, I like it too. I do. I like it a lot. Uh, I don't think I, but I sing classic rock. What do you sing when you do karaoke? Uh, probably classic rock. Yeah, I love like 70s stuff, you know, like Eagles, uh, maybe some 
some Genesis. Uh, I told my son. Some I Queen. Asked, I was talking to my son. It's funny you said the Eagles. I was talking to my son, and we're in the car, and I'm like, and I'm like, this is the Eagles. He goes, the what? I go, the Eagles. They're a legendary band. He goes, you say every band's legendary, Dad. <laughs> I'm like, that's because I only listen to legendary bands, son. <laughs> You know? But I like to try to do rap sometimes. I like to, you know, challenge really? myself and do a rap song. Which you realize it's really hard. I mean, that's that's fast. That's fast talking. Do you know any you, rap off the top of your head? Not off the top of my head. I'd have to see oh, the lyrics. Damn. I know, you know, you know, like the chorus. You know the chorus. You know. Yeah, I'm old school. I could probably do seven hours worth of rap that I know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You could do rap. I most unquestionably good. Now, Peter Piper picked right. peppers, but run rock rhymes. Humpty Dumpty fell down. This is hard times. I know the words. <laughs> okay. I'm All right. sitting. All right. It doesn't, doesn't work right. from a seated position. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, no energy. No energy. Some early hip hop. Some early I don't know if I want to see the energy, Kevin. I don't know if I want to see it. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. You might be a convert. <laughs> You're right. So, Scott, um, what are you working on now? You're working on a lot of different projects. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. <laughs> no, I, I did. <laughs> you expect I'm me so to do busy. research on this show? I'm yeah. so busy right now. Um, <laughs> I'm no, kidding. I've been, looked at a couple. No, I've been, I've been, I, just, I, I did do a film right at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, uh, we, we finished it right as the pandemic was starting. And so uh, it's called Bed and Breakfast, a cool little indie flick. So looking forward to that getting out there. And what's your uh, character in that? I play a dad and a movie director. Okay. Kind of like you, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about it. Um, Wait a minute. Did you write this? Are you no, I didn't. Me right now. <laughs> It's a sweet comedy, but I get to play a dad and, a you know, I don't get to play like some drugged out dude, you know, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Just right. Play someone just kind of, you know, a little is that what everybody <laughs> asked you? Is that what everybody asked you to do after they saw you in that series? Yeah. I play really weird guys. And, you know, but, but the, the problem is, you know, sometimes you, you know, it's like, you're not weird enough. <laughs> you're too, <laughs> It's like, what level of weirdness do you want? Um, right, right, right. <laughs> well, if they're boarded up windows, you don't want to go farther than, you know, maybe the sweater. <laughs> uh, but no, I'm there's kidding. yeah, there's some things that may be happening this summer, you know, waiting, waiting to hear on. So, um, like you said, you know, it's all good. Everything happens when it's time. No, you look at I've I've been a fan of yours before I met you. And then you were such a professional and you did that video uh, afterwards, the uh, uh, just to like say the movie was good and stuff like that. And we cut that up and that looked nice. Did I ever show you that? Yes. Yeah. And okay, that is good. it. And it was a great, um, your script is great, man. I got to get that thing going. It really I is. Know. It, it honestly was a good, good, good read. Good script. I've been working on it. I've been, believe me, I've been, I've been working on it. I've been working hard, you know, it's just the money, right? That's how yeah. this business is. And I hear yeah. that the, the indie film, the indie film world really got hit the hardest with the pandemic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think they're coming back now. I think it's actually, because I mean, like I did my own videos here living in Corona, you know, and about a guy who was losing his mind and developing split personalities because of quarantine. You know what I mean? So you was, work. That wasn't that was a video. Like, was that real? <laughs> it, it was real. It's a documentary. Oh, it's a, it's it's a documentary. documentary. Exactly. <laughs> that is, that's what it is. Exactly. Uh, but I actually filmed it kind of like a mockumentary, and and I actually learned how to put six of me in the same room and talk to each other. Oh and yeah, I've seen. Yeah, that was really hard to do, man. That was really. Have you ever done any editing? Do you, a, a little bit of light editing, you know, uh, but nothing, nothing heavy like six, six of me, uh, yeah. in one in one space. No, <laughs> but that's, you're working. That's on, a lot. 
<laughs> uh, it's it's okay. It's not it's it's not quite as hard as it sounds, but it is a lot of work. Um, you, but you've been working on uh, you got a couple of your friends. You've been shooting some stuff, uh, episodic. Um, I saw a couple of the episodes, and I I'm sorry, it's evading me the name of it. Oh, um, like smothered. I did uh, this thing. Yes, with, uh, Jason That's the one. Stewart. R- really funny uh, um, web series that he created. And uh, it's re- it's actually very, very funny, I have to say. And uh, I play like a therapist in that and um, the moderator. Jason, and, uh, yeah. Jason was on the show here. Yes, I heard he was, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was great. He was a very funny dude, yeah, he- very funny dude. So you guys are buddies too, right? Yeah, we're friends. You know, I've known him a long time from just the, the stand-up world. Yeah, he's, he's been around. Jason's been... I- I think I met you through Bill, right? Bill, uh, Bill, uh, Bill oh, Park. He's gonna kill. Him. Yes, Bill Park. Bill Park. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done I a lot remember. of stuff too. Yeah, I Bill's so. done a lot think, of stuff. Yeah, you came to watch him perform on the show that night, and you were amongst his friends that that were coming. And then was he doing I music? I, no, doing comedy. Okay. Oh wait, no. He, Oh no, he wasn't doing it. He came for someone else. He used to do stand up though. That's why I keep thinking yeah. of him doing the stand up. But um, how long had you guys known each other? I've probably known Bill for God, probably over ten years. Yeah, I mean at least like the mid two thousands, I guess. And you guys knew yeah. each other in New York. Yeah, me and Kevin have known each other. How long, Kevin? Uh, 20? probably 20, 22 years too long. <laughs> That's why after yeah. the show, it's over, Danny. Uh, yeah, me too. I just, <laughs> yeah, now that you say it that way, I feel the same. I really That's, do. You I, see, yeah. That's we're always on the same page. <laughs> what would be your dream job, Scott? If you could pick any particular <laughs> next job gig, what would it be? Um, probably, well, so not a hobby, but a job, um, a chef. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, wow. Because I, I, yeah, I love to cook. I, I, you know, I almost went to culinary school. I went to college, but I was almost going to go to culinary school. And uh, I just need to do something creative. And I feel like cooking is creative. That's probably my number two creative outlet. Uh, number number one, if you ask Danny. <laughs> yeah, I bet you you're off. making Italian food, right? Italian I do. Food? I do a lot of Italian food, as Irish as I am. Uh, oh, you're I Irish. Feel, I am. I am. Wow, do you think Kevin, I feel like Kevin you're, Fitzgerald? Yeah, giving me these Italian vibes. So I get I'm, it, though. Yeah, I'm from Daniel Bay Ridge, Patrick Brooklyn. Mc, so. Daniel Patrick McDermott, Kevin Fitzgerald. Yeah, this is okay. a very Irish hosted show. But I, you know, I've never I, been to Ireland. I got to go to Ireland. It's a beautiful country. First generation. Both of my parents were born there. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. So you got dual yeah. citizen citizenship then? I do not. Yeah, you can get it. For I sure. can. I can. So yeah, can you kids. can totally. So can my kids. Yeah, you should get it. I I might. Do it. Get out I of might. here. And Danny, you're <laughs> Irish. Danny's Irish, obviously. Yeah. He is. So. Both sides of my family. Both sides of my family. What about you? I'm Mostly. Russian. 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 Yeah, like really. But we came over here in the late, um, the late eighteen hundreds, like the eighteen nineties. So you know, wow, you look, Russian you look great. three generations. <laughs> you look great for your age. <laughs> <laughs> that must um, have been a memory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going no, it's just funny. Tonight. I just I just got approached by this Russian guy um, on the street here in L.A. Um, I was like, I was have, having a uh, lunch outside, you know, and he he came up to me and. He was like, asked me if I was Russian, you know, and he's like, you, and I said, yes. And I, but not, you know, I was born here, but he's like, you look like all the people from where I come from, you know, he's like, he, and he, and then I said, well, my family's from this region and it was exactly where he's from. So he's like, wow. he's like, he said, I just look like everybody back home. Wow. That's incredible, man. It yeah, was weird. You know how, like, because if you think about it, that's the thing about traveling around the world. You know, you come to America and everybody looks like from everywhere Americans. else, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. But we all came here from somewhere else. Um, yeah. 
you know, you'll go to a country and certain countries, there's a predominant looking type of person. You know, if you go to Ireland, there's a lot of people that look Irish and like go to this country, but then you come here and, you know, then we got, we got everything and that's, what's kind of cool. Um, about America. <laughs> no, but that's cool. That like you can walk, go to another country and they will tell you they're from there and they'll tell you, you look like you're from here. You know, I've had that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cause we are like our, our, we're, we're, we're all from somewhere else, you know, the, the I, McDermott's uh, my, my, my family, the McDermott's, they, they all look <laughs> like McDermott's. I mean, you know what I mean? You can literally tell they're McDermott's <clears throat> like it's obvious. You know what I mean? I always tell my cousins from Ireland that if they take me out to an Irish bar within a half an hour, people would be like, all right, who brought the douchebag? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So you did you ever see that film Brooklyn? You ever heard that film Brooklyn? Yes. No. It was out for you. Yes. About Actually, oh yeah, I've heard of it. And, and my mother was an Irish immigrant to Brooklyn. My father was the Bronx. But uh, it's it's one of those that almost you have to watch if you're uh, an immigrant in that time and era. Because what's cool about that film is you you watch it and you realize like that it's like takes place in the I guess the 30s or the 40s, and you think like well, the way that couple met in that film like that's how so many people you know like oh. Your your mom's side is Irish, your dad's side's Italian, and that it all started back then in New York when all these immigrants were coming yeah. to America from all these other countries. And that's why, you know, you think about it, we're all like so many people are like my this side of my family is this, that side of my family is that, you know? Yeah, it's 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 pretty awesome actually, you know. It's kind of cool. So Anyway, uh, we do have another segment coming up. I just wanted to notify everybody that we do have a segment called Ask Anthony coming up. And we're going to start doing a thing, folks. I just want to let you know we're thinking about it, Kevin, right? Uh, after party. We're thinking about having a show after the show where everybody just hangs out and chats, kind of like we're doing a little bit more this episode than other episodes. So we might be doing that. So that's something to look forward to. Scott, where can people find you? Um. Well, <laughs> find me anywhere on social media. You can find me. That's where you'll find me right now. Or Scott. on the streets, the streets of L.A. <laughs> Do you have anything people can buy? Uh, buy? I'm just trying no. to make you money. So if you're selling no. anything, I'm trying to help. <laughs> Nothing. I think we need your do a cookbook, Scott. My cookbook? <laughs> uh, my cookbook's coming out. <laughs> No, I'm gonna be selling be selling some art someday. Keep an eye out. Are you? Uh, keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Is that Come your on. art behind you right there, or no? That that is one of my paintings. Yeah. Is it really? It's it's. Uh, That's it's beautiful. Like a, you know, children of the corn. You know, cornfields. <laughs> I don't know how good. I don't know how good it looks. Wait. So it's you're trying to make, you, you now you want to make it creepy? I thought it was beautiful. You said the no, children is, of the corn. It is. Well, there's people if you look at it. I mean, you can you can deduce oh. whatever you want from it, but uh, oh. it is one of my it is one of my paintings. Yeah, that's nice. cool. Very cool. How many paintings do you have up around your place? Uh, there's a lot, like ten. It's, wow. Yeah. So you, how long you have you been painting? Um, well, a lot more lately. You know, uh, I was yeah. painting when I was a kid, and then over the last uh, 10, 15 years, I've been doing more painting, more drawing, you know. That's always an awesome story when uh, a childhood interest kind of comes back with a vengeance in adulthood. It's kind of like full circle. Yeah. Me, uh, really? Speaking of which, Kevin, you're fired. I'm going to be eating crayons <laughs> later. Wait, wait. <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> That's an upgrade. <laughs> All right. Listen, Scott, we want you to stay on. Uh, okay. You're a great guest and, and hang out after two. Uh, we're going to bring on our next segment. Boom. Spotlight on Dudley Moore. Hello, everybody. How you doing? I'm so excited about this one. <laughs> What's up, Scott? Not really? Hey, Mondo, Mondo Video. Right, right. <laughs> Painter, how's life? 
Who? Tater. How's life? Ah. Yes. I, I see. I, uh, I, I missed that cue. <laughs> it is well. I'm, Good. I'm uh, just settling into my tater skin. Just getting my camera cues down. Uh, don't mind this. Limp Neon. We're doing a little construction in all Mondo video, so it is what it is. I don't even see it. It looks, looks great. It looks great. Are you kidding me? Oh, it looks like that's the fire exit. Like in the event of a fire, <laughs> go right in between right there and you'll be escorted to safety. Absolutely. I want to let you all know, um, this is like the first segment of Ask Anthony that we've done a spinoff of. So instead of just spot, <laughs> right, instead of just spotlighting movie genres like, hey, spring break movies, check it out. Sex comedies, check it out. We're going to spotlight actors, you know? I and because uh, there's, you know, you can go from Madeline Kahn to tonight, Dudley Moore, and you can go here and there. There's so many people to deep dive down in. So it's a little weird because I feel like this is like an oral report. And that was like my worst fears in school. So we're just going to get into it. So I have my bullet points over here, and then I just have my natural Dudley Moore knowledge. So we're just going to get into it. Okay. So sounds good, bud. Bear with me, and we're going to just steamroll right through this in honor of Dudley Moore because he actually just passed. Uh, the anniversary of his passing is March 27th, 2002. So that was just a few days ago. Uh, the dude was born April 19th, 1935. And everybody knows that he was a man of short stature. Okay. He was a tiny guy. He, he was 5'2 uh, on his best day. God bless him. Um, <laughs> but he was born to a working, uh, working class family um, in England. And uh, he was born with a club foot. So he had numerous operations and he was actually bullied quite a bit. And that's what helped his comedic side because uh, I guess he got tired of it one day and he made a joke and it, it was infectious. And he just, he, he, you know, if you can't beat him or kill him, kill him with kindness or, or comedy. And that's what he did. And he did it very well. Uh, but the thing is, his mom bought him a piano at, at a very early age. And apparently he just took to it. He was very proficient in the piano and violin. OK, so anytime you watch a Dudley Moore movie and he gets on a piano, that's not an accident. He oh, is no. Pro no. probably 95 percent playing at any given time. Incredible, yeah. incredible musician. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, jazz and classical. He was very proficient in. And I think that's like the most underrated side of of Dudley Moore, because when we think of him, we think of him as just like a, a fun actor. Um, but yeah, so he uh, he basically um, uh, I got some notes over here. I'm going to refer to real quick. I actually got a, a scholarship to Oxford, okay, for uh, an organ scholarship, and um, basically uh, he took it he took it upon himself to to go down that path. And the fact that he was from a working class family and he was kind of out of step with the Oxford crowd, you know, these are like six foot something, you know, uh, well to do individuals. Uh, he actually found refuge in a basement jazz club, uh, actually in the student union. And uh, wow. it's there where he kind of formed his posse. And this is where the story begins of his career. Uh, the first thing he got into uh, was called Beyond the Fringe. Um, as you can see, this was a super satirical comedy uh, review that he would do with his pals. Um, that actually kicked off the whole satirical situation uh, of the 60s in England and beyond. Uh, it actually doesn't get a lot of credit. Um, and from there, there's a few, I think we have a few more photos from this era of his life. It looks like Al yeah. Gore. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's the, that's the, the troop, um, the posse, if you will, of the uh, comedic troop. Um, wow, look at that. Yeah, from there he did, uh, I think it was uh, not only, but also, yes. So initially he was given this uh, talk show and it was just going to be not only Dudley Moore, but also a guest. But he didn't feel that he had the talk show presence. So he actually brought Peter Cook in, who was also his partner in Beyond the Fringe. Oh, is uh, that why Danny brought Tater in? Yeah. That's oh, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I was By waiting for Kevin. I was <laughs> waiting for Kevin to say it, but you can do it too. Actually... I got the job by the fact that I'm five feet, seven inches tall. Oh, that's great. By the way, yeah. I, I welcome interjections because it's it's like having your friends in class chime in on your oral report because that's how I feel like this is. So, but anyway, <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. The teacher's right here judging me. Just kidding. Well, so, you know, you know what it was? 
you know what it was? We were so entranced with the story. <laughs> uh, God bless you. you no, I'm not kidding you. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of Dudley Moore. I'm a huge fan of the guy. And just to hear the, this, this information is amazing to me. So continue, continue. Thank you, sir. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not sure if we have any more uh, archival photos from this period of his life. Uh, but basically that was um, the highlight of his kind of uh, England, uh, London uh, career, if you will. There you go. There you go. Uh, but basically he wanted to branch out and take America by storm and to see if he can you know, make a splash. And he did a little, uh, he did some film and TV work here and there, but it was foul play that really got him going. Um, and I think I may, yes, exactly. So this is one of the, uh, oh, wow. this is a scene stealing uh, moment in the movie. Now, everybody knows Chevy Chase left SNL to do Foul Play. And it's a fantastic movie. If, if anybody's not seen it, that's watching. Um, and it's great piece of work by uh, Goldie and Chevy. But I got to tell you, Dudley Moore steals the scene, he steals the show. Uh, he's got this one little moment, basically. It's like almost maybe 10 minutes. Uh, where Goldie Hawn's tr trying to evade somebody chasing her. So she dips into a club and he's sitting by himself. And I'm sure you've all seen it. Basically, he, <laughs> yeah, she just wants to get safety, get to safety. So he, he takes her to his, uh, his apartment and it's basically a sex trap. And behind hidden walls and doors, the uh, sex shit just gets revealed. And it's like the most funny, almost slapstick, like sight gag. <laughs> And he's trying to hide it. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. And it's just like it's like total mechanics <laughs> and hydraulics. Uh, it really, I, I gotta say, it steals the entire movie away from Goldie and Chevy. But, it's hysterical. Um, it's hysterical. Yeah, but because of that uh, cameo that he did, if you will, uh, it got the attention of Blake Edwards. Oh wow! Ten. Wow. Yes, and uh, everyone's seen this, I imagine. Yes. This was his big break. This was his big movie. Yes, uh, leading man. Uh, of course, Bo yes, Derek man. helped. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I had that. I had that hairstyle myself. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I, I hope that means Dudley Moore. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Maybe for a TikTok, you should bring it back. Naked on a right? horse. I'll do it. <laughs> Is that Bolero? <laughs> please, please, no, stop, stop. Uh, no. So just get out of control. <laughs> Ten was a. Uh, it's an interesting and and super fun flick. Um, it's funny because when I was kind of reviewing it again, uh, from the eyes of doing this, uh, I realized that Blake Edwards always wants to make the protagonist likable, even though they're usually cheating. So it's kind of interesting. I'm not talking about all his works, but if you think about like, you got 10, uh, what, what's the other one? You got skin deep. There's another one, uh, Mickey and Maude. Wow. You're yeah. right. I you know, I never, th yeah, I never thought of that, but that you're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah and I'm not saying. That's wrong. I'm just saying Wait. I noticed a common mm -hmm. through line. Did you ever so, see the party? The party with Peter Sellers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, underrated movie right there. Um, <laughs> uh, and I'm not saying that's you know how dare he for doing that. I'm just saying it's a it's a kind of a tightrope. <clears throat> you know, it, it's a fine balance to make uh, a unsympathetic unsympathetic character likable. It is. Know? It is. Or to to find sympathy you hear that, in Kevin? somebody who's Damage. You, you hear that, Kevin? You hear that? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> How'd I so, do? You did well, God damn it. Uh, so I got to tell you, I'm going to do a sidestep uh, to Bo Derek. Okay. Um, this movie, uh, obviously, this is the most iconic sequence when she's jogging and he's jogging towards her. Of course, oh, it's yeah. of course it's a uh, you know figment of his imagination. Spoiler alert. Well, you got to chime in here. Yeah. Um, Bo Derek guest starred on an episode of Chuck. I got to work with Bo Derek. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Right. Very cool. Very cool. She was I got to tell Grimes. you. She was with Grimes. <laughs> yes, exactly. She was after him, boy. Yeah, so, that was good. side note, we had a, uh, I do animation for South Park, and we had a rap party at the uh, Marriott Glow, the lounge in uh, Marina Del Rey. I don't know if it's the same title now. And uh, they were shooting Chuck there. This is probably over 10 years ago, maybe, or about 10 years ago. And Zach, Zach Levy? Yeah. Levi, yeah. Levi. Levi uh, yeah. Crashed the party. The nicest guy. Super fun. I mean, at least my experience. He, he was super awesome. So my experience with Chuck, aside from enjoying the show, Zach was a super stand-up guy. And, uh, yeah, we had an awesome time. 
the end. <laughs> That's he all was, I, uh, I met him once. Uh, I was working as a temp uh, at this financial building, and I was walking out. And I, he's tall too, by the way. Yes, he, he is. Yeah. And um, yeah. And uh, I met him. I talked to him for a couple minutes because I knew a friend of his, David Moscow, and we had. David Moscow told me a funny story about Zach that I can't, I, I'm not going to say it on the show. Is that Mostow? Like the guy it's not, from a, it's not embarrassing or anything, but it's just not my story. Is that the actor that? from Big? Yes. Thought it was. Yes. Wow. Holy cow. You knew that? That's I mean, crazy. I got a bunch of fucking movies here. I better know something. Yes. Wow. <laughs> the video. Look, customers he, have questions. Video store. <laughs> yeah. David was, David. David was the uh, young Tom Hanks mm -hmm. in Big, and I met him at a screenwriting class at Columbia University. We were both Josh. in the same. Huh? Was it Josh? Josh? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, awesome, we, man. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, we're off track. What, we're off track. Well, no, no, no. What was fun is uh, Zach uh, was rocking his Chuck uniform while we were all hanging out. So it was like, oh, this nice. is great. Yeah. So all right, moving forward. Uh, I will say though, <laughs> photographically, to sidestep. In terms of, uh, and this is a Dudley Moore tribute, but in terms of 10, I don't know in recent memory how well somebody has been photographed, uh, but Bo Derek. I mean, the photography in that film for her yeah. is almost like stunning. You know, like they really did a great, whoever the DP is, I should have gotten their, their, I should have done my homework on that regard. They really did a hell of a job. So just shout out to that. The end. No, that's all. I 100 percent agree. He actually captured that era as well as any actress in any era. <clears throat> that ten for a while, that that beaded hair well, or braided or whatever the hell you call yeah, it. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it it was everywhere, and she she became an icon. Hundred percent. A hundred percent, and off of that movie. Yep, that show made her the most popular actress in the world. Oh really, yeah, pretty I, much. I mean, I was a I fetus think, then. I was like. Too, but man, I I really oh, yeah 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 I, me I, I too. that. Yeah, you were born yet. You were born when Speed came out. <laughs> me, me too. Me, In '94, per I, other I was I was a very very I was an embryo actually. I yes, yes. Dan, Danny is uh, ever ever young, forever young. So I, I'm going to let <laughs> this next movie go to Danny. This is Holy Moses, and I got to I yes. have to admit I've never seen this movie actually. Oh. I, I had to harken back, and I realized I don't think I've ever seen it. So oh, please God, take, take take this one, bud. Okay, uh, this I, I okay. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but this movie, when I was a kid, I was a big fan of Jerry Lewis. I was a big fan of Dudley Moore, and when this movie came out and I watched it, it blew my mind because I was raised Catholic, and so uh, we had the, we knew the story of Jesus and Moses and and all this stuff, and and um, this movie is about the guy that thinks he's supposed to be doing Moses's job, but he's right behind Moses and he doesn't get there in time to do anything. <laughs> and he th still believes he's being sent by the Lord. And that's Dudley Moore. And it's just, it's, it, it blew my mind. The comedy, I, it, I could not contain <laughs> the laughter. Who directed, crazy. who directed that? Is that Blake Edwards too? Or this one's not, uh, but I, I don't know who directed this one. I mean, I'm, I'm like literally leering into the font there. I actually don't know. Um, so I have failed you, sir. I have failed you. Uh, I, I feel like the concept uh, is familiar. So maybe I saw it maybe as a kid. Gary Weiss, writer Gar Guy Thomas. So Gary Weiss, I have a feeling he's done some other work. Um, you know, watch it again because I, I, I want to remember the exact uh, comedic sequences that made me laugh. But I just can't. I don't want to. I don't want to try it and then mess it up. I haven't seen it in oh, a while. Sure. Is so, that uh, way too much? By the way, thank you, Susanna, for the uh, specs on the movie because uh, I didn't have it. Uh, so the next one is, and I've said this before in other segments, is my favorite Dudley Moore film, and it's hands down, in my opinion, his best piece of work. Uh, and it's funny. At, I started doing a deep dive just before I decided to do this segment on Dudley Moore movies, because there was a few that I hadn't seen, uh, I would say a couple that I hadn't seen, besides Holy Moses, that I started watching. And I started realizing, upon reviewing a lot of these, that we kind of get Dudley Moore in a lot of these movies. He's almost playing himself, if I knew the guy personally. Like, yeah. there's a through line, you know? Kind of like when yeah. we watch a Paul Rudd movie, we get a Paul Rudd movie. Like, we feel like we're hanging out with an old pal. 
you yeah. know, and I'm not saying he's not, he doesn't have uh, range, but personally when Paul Rudd, if I can bring up Paul Rudd makes a film, I want to hang out with Paul Rudd or at least the one that I know uh, of the last 15 years. Right. Forgive my rambling, but uh, Arthur, in my opinion, yes. is his best piece of work. 100%. Hands yeah, down. That's a classic. Hands down. Uh, so apparently his agent got the script. He was given it. And he was hounding his agent on, on getting this role. Like he wanted to do it. He would blow up his agent's phone. He needed to have this role. He was so taken by the script. And I believe the script was written and directed by Steve Gordon. And Steve, unfortunately, passed away about a year later. Uh, and this is probably one of the funniest scripts, in my opinion, next to the jerk ever. Um, but, what, but what made it great, what made it great was the underlying drama of the depression that he was in that made it freaking hilarious. There you go. Oh, was, nicely done. Nicely done. Yeah, absolutely. Steve Gordon, Dudley Moore. Um, yeah, so Steve Gordon died untimely. Um but yes, you're absolutely correct. Uh, and I got to say, uh, Sir, Sir John Gilgood, I mean, just the relationship oh, that he had, which was a father figure, uh, Hobson, um, was just fantastic. And Liza was fantastic. Everything just finally came together uh, just in a picture. But uh, he, he needed to do this role. And what's interesting about this movie is it actually showcased, and even 10 showcased this, but he's actually a very fantastic physical comedian. I, I think it's, a, he's an underrated uh, or he's looked upon underrated in that regard. Like usually when you think of physical comedians, you think of like of yesteryear, you think of like Chevy Chase, John Ritter, so on and so forth. We can keep going back. Yeah. But uh, Dudley Moore was, was very physical in what he was doing. And, and, and at the time he wasn't really a drinker at all. So the fact that he could nail it, is so, yeah, he, for those of you who don't know, he played an alcoholic uh, rich guy who was going to get cut off if he didn't change his ways. Yes. And he, he just didn't care. He, and no. It, yeah. <laughs> he he played piano. He sang. He got he was he was he was actually very genuine and nice and hilarious. The one liners. But when he got drunk, he was hysterical, just hysterical. The way he fought, fell over things, the way he the, the one liners that were zinging out of his mouth. Every two seconds, it was crazy. Yeah, I, and I've seen the movie probably a hundred times, and and for me, it still totally holds up. Uh, and I think it's really somebody who's interested in comedy uh, in, in any regard. I think it's a study uh, outside of just a good time. Yes. So there's Arthur. Totally love the movie. I think it's the highlight of his career. He's done some great work beyond that, but I think uh, – he knew it was a special piece of work that he had to be involved in. Yeah. And he totally elevated it. So there you go. So the next one, I believe, is, uh, I want to say, romantic comedy. Oh, Mary Steenburgen and good old Dudley Moore. Has anybody seen this one? This one I didn't see. God, I don't think I have. It's it's I'm not, I'm worth your while. It's worth your while. Um, uh, Dudley Moore is a playwright, a successful one, and he gets teamed up with another writer because his other partner leaves and the other writer is Mary Steenburgen who oh, is wow. quite young at this time but she's the quintessential Mary Steenburgen that we all know and she's great at it and uh, basically they've got some flops in their career they've got mostly hits uh, but there's a lot of sexual tension and just love tension in their partnership he's married and she's not and it's that whole like push and pull throughout the whole like 10 year career that they have in this film yeah, and nicely done, nicely done. Um, it's a, it's actually kind of a sweet movie, but it totally holds up. It's well worth your time. Um, totally watch it if you have a second. Romantic comedy, the end. Wow. Yes, sir. Dude. Not the end on the segment. The end on that. You know me. <laughs> keep, keep going, dude. I was gonna tell you, look at that. Was just an applause break. Oh, God bless you. All right. just, I'm going to try to steamroll through this real quick. So we're going to do Unfaithfully hey, Yours. You're doing great. Oh, that that's a great film. No, that's it. The end. No, there it is. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Nastasius uh, Kinski. Um, oh, man. Plays his other half. Basically, he this is a remake, I believe, of a 1948 film with Rex Harrison. Uh, but basically, uh, Dudley Moore is his famous composer. 
and he's got a very young wife and he uh, is alerted to her infidelity. And um, he uh, has all these, it's almost like Ally McBeal before Ally McBeal. There's a lot of like imaginative thought processes going on uh, before he actually tries to act them out. Uh, so the whole point is because he feels she's cheating on him, he's going to murder her. And Armand mm -hmm. de in it and a slew of other cats. And it's, it's, it's a fun picture, uh, worth your while. Uh, I don't want to say it's a movie that you want to fold laundry to, like you kind of want to watch, maybe sip, sip on something or tea <laughs> or a beer, whatever you want to do. It's a good, it's a good piece of work by Dudley Moore. Watch so, it with your significant other and don't decide based on them, whether or not you need to take action. <laughs> right. Now I got to tell you the next movie, best defense. Okay. Now I got to tell you, this one's an interesting uh, copy I have. You see how that ribbon's coming out? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was uh, revisiting this recently and there's a scene, there's multiple scenes where this woman, his boss bends over quite a bit or has like, you know, scantily clad photography on her and the film in my VCR, as I point to it, kept getting real weird tracking around then. So what that told me was somebody was pausing it repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly <laughs> and making impression marks in the ribbon <laughs> repeatedly. Uh, oh, and it got geez. to the point where my VCR spit it out and destroyed it. Oh. So there was no good defense on that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dudley Moore is is the same uh, wonderful, dry guy that we know and love in this film. Uh, what's weird about this movie, it's an interesting uh, almost experiment, is they made the movie without Eddie Murphy attached. They just made it. And then upon reviewing, they said, we need somebody to save this film. And it wasn't that it was Dudley Moore's fault. It was just incomplete. It, wow. it didn't have enough. So yeah. Dudley the Moore commercial. was on, the, or uh, Eddie Murphy was on the heels of. Uh, yes. Hottest star in the country. Trading places. And, and the, the commercial basically was the extent of his part in the movie. 100%. They yeah. used it. That's they right. just used it to sell the movie. Genius. 100%. Yes. I'm a big it's fan funny of because. Base. Yeah, it's funny because the uh, filmmakers, when you're watching it, it even says strategic <laughs> guest star Eddie Murphy. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're not even shying away from it, which I totally yeah. respect. I think it's a killer move. It might make a lot of people scratch their heads, but I think it's solid. But basically, they attached the, him as a wraparound, um, and they inserted him. He's basically a tank tester, and uh, yeah. Dudley Moore works for a d defense company working on this part for the tank. Uh, and apparently they shot a scene together, but it ended up on the cutting room floor. But I will say uh, Dully is kinetic as he always is, energetic as he always is, engaging as he always is, funny. I mean, I could go on and on. Uh, and, and it works. Is it a good movie? Not really. Is it I worth your watch? Being disappointed. Yeah. Is it is it worth a watch while you're folding laundry? How yes. much money did Eddie Murphy get paid for that? Basically for the commercial. You know what's funny? I'm glad you brought that up, actually. God bless you. Uh, apparently, uh, he's on record of saying four men came into a room and offered him a lot of money. And he said, okay. Wow. <laughs> the, yeah. Well, that makes sense. Richie was uh, uh, his manager at the time, Richie Tankin. Kevin, you knew who he was, right? Yes. He owned the comic strip. Mm. But uh, yeah, yeah, he used to manage me, but he managed Eddie Murphy right at that time. Wow. Holy shit. So, yeah. Yep. It, right. That's uh, through, awesome. Through, connective tissue. Yeah. Beverly Hills Cop. All the all those. That's right. You mentioned that. Yes. Yeah. Did he? Did he pass away recently? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. He did. yeah. I, I'm yeah. sorry to hear that, but yes, yes, I no, recall. It's okay. He he lived a long life. He was he was a good man, good mentor. But yeah, Eddie Murphy. Uh, that makes sense at that time because he was so high. He had so much to do. Why not? Why yeah. not? Yeah. I mean. Football? At that point, I think I think his agent was saying, take anything. Uh, this was yeah. probably, I mean, don't quote me here, probably pre-Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, I think, yeah, Hills I know. Cop, I think absolutely. So. Not to take it away from Dudley, Beverly Hills Cop was <laughs> fucking incredible. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah there's absolutely. that. Uh, so the next one is Mickey and Maude. We're getting through this. We're almost done. Uh, Mickey and Maude is an interesting Blake Edwards film. <clears throat> and this is the infidelity thing again, where yeah. uh, he is with a woman, his wife, who is – uh, pro career, less having kids. So he has an affair with Amy Irving, Steven Spielberg's, I believe, first wife. And uh, she gets pregnant. He's going to break it off with his original wife. And she's like, oh, I'm pregnant too. So he's like, I'm going to make them both work. The end. 
but he is affable, <laughs> slapsticky, fun. He's the clown that he is. Uh, he, uh, it's a, it's actually a good piece of work. Totally recommend it. Um, it's not incredible, but it's got some good moments in it. So uh, if you're looking for a Dudley Moore movie, boom. See, uh, will I ever get these camera cues down? Point the Dude, other it's way. Great. It's great. It's going great. No, I appreciate that. But I think that you should <laughs> go like George Lucas style, like CGI my uh, camera cues the other way. Um, well, we're going to need $100,000 for that. Oh, come on now. So the next <laughs> one is like a Freaky Friday Dudley Moore bit, with his, which is uh, like father like son. And we're just going to say, hey. This was funny. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, they, this was, there was a slew of these. It was vice versa, like father like son. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's fine. Uh, Dudley Moore's his, up to his usual hijinks. It's great. Um, yeah, it's just, you're right, though. It's it's a premise that's been done way too many times. But Well, I think yeah. they reintroduced it to the 80s because it was, like, ripe for that kind of, like, you know, redoing, dare I say. Because I don't yeah. love remakes. Some work. Most, of my opinion, don't. Uh, or redos, if you will. But sometimes you have a concept that can, you know, benefit from other exploring. And I think this might have been one of them. It was, actually wasn't bad. Uh, moving along, we've got Arthur 2. And i got to be honest, the only only part in this movie that I actually liked was with Arthur and Sir John Gilgood. Beyond that, I thought the movie was eh, meh. So, i got to watch it again. Did, were there three of them? No. Just two. Just two. No, no. Uh, there was a scene with him and Sir John Gilgood, and they're just walking through. I, I think it was like a Christmas tree lot. But it was like really like emotional and just it's wonderful to see them together. And I hate to say, in my opinion, maybe the movie wasn't all that rad. So when you got to that scene with the two of them, you were like, oh, my gosh, thank God. Um, <laughs> but because uh, John Gilgood's fantastic in anything he does. Uh, and I think together it was just like a nice reunion. No disrespect to Liza Minnelli. But uh, moving along in his career, we have crazy people. We're getting to the end of the segment. Now, a lot of people love this movie. I thought it was just okay. Love it. I ah, loved see? It. Yeah. I loved it. I love this movie. It's t so tell me a little bit about why you love it, if you if you don't mind. Okay, so so Dudley Moore is an advertising executive who suddenly uh, – <laughs> Truth in advertising. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, what happens is he suddenly uh, – I don't know why he gets – I think he gets put in the asylum. He has a breakdown, I think. I'm, get, I'm trying to remember – but he's in this asylum with all these crazy people. And as ah, he's hanging okay. out with them, sure. he realizes he realizes that they have great, honest, like ways of describing brands. And that's what it was. That's what actually landed him. So he, yeah, as you said, he was an advertising, you know, dude, uh, ad guy. And he started doing like things like buy Volvo because you shit too. Or just whatever, just truth in advertising. So everything was like pulling the wool and bullshit aside. And, and that's actually why this movie works uh, on a level for me, uh, aside from Dudley Moore. No, I, loved I loved it too when, when they came up with a bad one. Because they had a lot of good ones, but sometimes one guy would come up, he'd be like, Sony, bony. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, fair enough. Hey, he's, just like, he's like, no, no. <laughs> but that's 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 okay that's the highlight in my opinion of the film uh, oh, in terms so of a gimmick funny. but uh more is is very good in it but uh, i think uh, it's just not my favorite but um uh, there's a lot of people who just love this movie it's almost cult at this point uh yeah, i'm, it's, I'm it's, part it's, of all these I, yeah i love it i love it yeah i'm, I'm part of I'm, these like vhs groups or whatever on facebook and whatever and people jock this movie and it's usually like gen z like younger cats and that's great that it's finding new life um but uh i will say though if you have any interest in doing a deep dive or just a mild dive on dudley moore's life uh there's a lot to be uh had on youtube you just do uh dudley moore bio and oprah winfrey even has this segment in her show where she visits his house in venice beach and it's like a real personal Barbara Walters thing, if you will, but it's Oprah style. Oh, that's uh, cool. Yeah, so it's actually uh, pretty badass, um, and he gets like very personal, and it's 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 worth your twenty minutes. And uh, I think uh, I think at the end of the day, he was a gifted clown, if you will. Uh, he was absolutely an improv artist, absolutely a slapstick 
pratfall physical comedian. Um, and I think, I just hope he has another life uh, in terms of his work uh, from here yeah. on out, you know, as opposed to just being like fallen by the wayside. Cause obviously there's new content just inundating our lives every single day. So yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. we, I celebrate so Dudley good. Moore. Very nice. nice. All the report, first one down. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Always a fun thing. Always. That was that uh, was fantastic. That. I'm gonna get a side note. Never do that again. Ever. No, no, no. <laughs> Stick no, to sex comedies. It. No, Dude, I that, loved it. It was that's great. That's fantastic. Uh, that's nice of you. I appreciate I, uh, it. I got some movies on my list. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, it's 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 a fun marathon. Absolutely. Anything with Dudley Moore is a good time. More I'd also less. love to see, you know, you you sort of touched on a little bit of a recurring theme of Moore and Sir John Gielgud, and I'd love to see just two people that really click through multiple movies and the range that they can do oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. together, you know, like yeah, there's, yeah. There's, that's to me a very interesting thing when that chemistry is there and it can go through several different genres. You know, oddly enough, uh, uh, it was Peter Cook and Dudley Moore uh, in Beyond the Fringe and not only, but also uh, Peter Cook was his kind of right hand man back in the day when he was doing the comedic reviews. Uh, and that was a partnership that, you know, kind of worked really well, almost like, you know, Monty Python with John Cleese and Eric Idle and so on and so forth. But uh, you're absolutely correct. There's there's something there for sure. You know, so. it's funny. A lot of the greats. Mm, yeah. Go ahead, Scott. I was just going to ask you when is uh, VHS making a comeback or? <laughs> I enough it is. <laughs> no. Can you believe it? It's the future. Yeah, no. Everything old is new again. I mean, it is in this area, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it is in this area. Yeah. You so. mean it left? Yeah, where'd it go? <laughs> right? But uh, yeah, so to Dudley Moore. But a lot of the greats to Dudley Moore. Uh, Cheers. And to Scott. Of... Yes. Nice to know <laughs> you, my friend. Fun guest. To Scott. Hey, no nice, nice to meet you. No doubt, even though he's not that good at judging TikTok contests. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he is the best. He's I actually missed that. that. I, I hate to say that I missed that. Them. I hate to say that I missed that segment, so I'm going to go back and watch it. But it's always a whirlwind for me to get to sit right here before I sit yeah. right here. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Well, no worries. Man. You're it. always great. No, You're always nice great. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Scott, seriously, you can come back anytime you want, buddy. Thanks, man. It was great to be here. Um, that was fun. Fun. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Anything you want to promote before we uh, check out here? What do you got going, man? Um, your, no, man. Paintings? Yeah, check out. Check out. <laughs> there's some good. There's some good uh, indie films I did. You know, the past few years. Uh, Dave made a maze. Check that out. Okay. Get big. Yeah, there's some. They they need some love, you know. They're on uh, they're at streaming, um, and I think this uh, our Mondo. Sorry, what's your name? Mondo video. Mondo Anthony. video. Yeah, yeah. Anthony. Anthony, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. check, I think you'd like Dave made a maze. Cool. Yeah, I actually looked at your it. IMDb. You have a you get some credits. I, can, I, I get a vibe for the kind of movies this guy likes. Cool. Right? Right on. I'll right? check it out, man. Absolutely, guys. On the bottom, there's the uh, support for the show. If you guys want, like the show, and uh, we're going to continue to make it and change it and make it grow. And uh, hopefully with your help, we can, uh, you know, actually make a dime. Danny, I, I have one thing to ask. Yes, sir. It looks like there's a broken sprinkler behind you. You may want to call the water and power company. Oh, yeah. that Yeah. Yeah. That, that happens that's, all the that's time. That's the Department of Environmental Protection, and they'll it, take care it of it. Really, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. God damn it. Absolutely. God damn it. Yeah. All right, guys. Because I'm could be because I'm leaning against the green screen, but oh, why are you gonna spoil it? <laughs> oh. It was a real water main burst. Oh, I know, man. I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. So, be, some people are gonna be watching. They're gonna be like, "Wow, wow." <laughs> anyway, right, they're gonna think there's a sprinkler, and I, I don't want them to panic that I'm gonna drown. That's all it's I'm a saying. Geyser in Times Square. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a movie. New faith. There you go. And the title. Guy Geyser <laughs> in Times Square. Yeah. You got alligators coming out, giant alligators. That's the sequel. Okay. Come on now. We That's should just sequel. end the show before we write a horrible movie. No, that, Thank that you sounds guys. like a sci-fi movie right there. <laughs> Channel. See you guys. Good Let's night. hang out after. Nope.